On a recent trip to Philadelphia, we caught up with Dr. Carol Shields, who is the Associate Director of the Oncology Service at Wills Eye Hospital and a Professor of Ophthalmology at Thomas Jefferson's University School of Medicine. She has authored an astonishing 700 plus articles and is widely recognized as a preeminent authority on ocular tumors. Of interest, Dr. Shields also played basketball for the Notre Dame Fighting Irish and was given their highest honor for excellence in both academics and leadership. So if I had a mole in my eye, I would first want to see an ophthalmologist who could dilate my eyes, look in the back, and quantify the amount or the size of the mole in the back of my right or left eye. Knowing that moles are fairly common, about 7% of white people have a mole, I don't think I'd be too worried, but I would make sure that the doctor checks me at least once or twice a year. I would want a photograph at each, at each visit, and I'd want the doctor to examine the mole carefully, looking for associated features. Most ophthalmologists feel fairly comfortable making the diagnosis just based on clinical examination. So if the mole's in the front of the eye, in the iris, they might use one of our microscopes called the slit lamp to look at the iris, document the size, document any seeding of the mole, and take a photograph. If the mole were in the back of the eye, then they'd have to put the head, head scope on called the indirect ophthalmoscope, and they would use a lens to focus in on the mole and make a drawing and estimate the size and look for the associated features of fluid or orange pigment. But it's very important that all moles be documented with photography. And it's particularly important for moles in the back of the eye because it's difficult to see them. All of us can see a mole in the front of the eye, but moles in the back of the eye are invisible to the naked eye and a photograph is necessary to document the size and location. So the ophthalmologist would likely choose to see me back in three months just to confirm that this mole is not new. Some moles can, some melanomas can be mistaken for moles. That's why you want to be reevaluated within three to six months. If it is a melanoma, it will likely change in its size or configuration. If it is a mole, it will likely remain stable. And at each visit, perhaps on a six-month basis, the ophthalmologist would check the size of the mole, compare the mole with their scope to the photographs that we had taken initially, and if any differences are found, generally they send the patient on to see the ocular oncologist or to see a retina specialist. So once we divide out the melanomas into suspicious and non-suspicious, we generally just photograph the non-suspicious moles. Okay, sometimes we will do an OCT, optical coherence tomography. This is a really nice, simple to do test where a light beam is shined into the eye and it allows us to identify the retinal features overlying a mole. And the non-suspicious or chronic moles tend to show very chronic changes in the retina where the outer layers of the retina get thinned. That's good. That tells us the mole is chronic and it's not likely to evolve into melanoma. Whereas the suspicious moles tend to have less chronic findings on OCT. They may have a little bit of fluid, but not the thinning of the retina. That makes them more suspicious. These tests are important because they allow us to, they assist in deciding whether a mole is truly suspicious or not suspicious. Another test that's helpful is the ultrasound. This is a test where a probe is placed on the eye, very comfortable test, with a little bit of jelly, and it allows us to look at the internal characteristics of a mole. If a mole looks real dense on ultrasound, then it's likely to behave itself and remain a mole. If a mole looks real hollow, echolucent on ultrasound, that's a risk for transformation into melanoma. So we don't like to see the hollow features on ultrasound. And there's yet another test, and that's called fluorescein angiography. This is a test where we give an IV injection. We look at the blood flow to the eye, and moles that are very chronic or non-suspicious tend to produce very chronic changes in the tissues in the back of the eye, giving a mottled look to, at the side of the mole, whereas melanoma tends to produce fluid, and you can see a puddle of fluid, and little, folks of leak, little spots of leakage overlying the melanoma. 
so you can separate out the two groups based on the fluorescein results. So I think all three tests, OCT, ultrasound, and fluorescein angiography, are all three complementary in your evaluation of a mole. I should say that we don't use all three tests on all patients. It's only the most suspicious moles that we wind up using all three tests. The average mole that you might see in your practice on a day-to-day -day basis probably only needs an, just a photograph. The more suspicious ones need one or all three of those tests. So what would I do if I had a mole in my eye? First of all, I wouldn't panic, knowing that moles are common. I would follow up with my doctor twice a year. I would understand that moles could reduce my vision and that moles carry a very small risk for evolution into melanoma. And I would make sure my doctor takes a photograph at least once a year of the mole.